Hello and welcome. Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon. My name is Faz Kareem, F-A-Z, and I'm with Learn It. And I want to go ahead and welcome everyone to Excel Functions, a quick video designed to go ahead and cover at VLOOKUP, Index and Match, and the all-new XLOOKUP. For those of you that don't know, Microsoft has updated Excel for Office 365 users. And they've included an all-new function called XLOOKUP that will finally end that debate. Is VLOOKUP or Index and Match better? Why? Because XLOOKUP is going to make both of those obsolete. Now, with that being said, VLOOKUP and Index Match aren't going anywhere. There are some use cases for them. But I just want to point out that XLOOKUP can do a lot of the things that VLOOKUP does for you without all the limitations that we we're going to discuss, as well as XLOOKUP has a lot of functionality that allows you to go ahead and add error checking, as opposed to using if error. Now, with that being said, we're first going to dive into VLOOKUP, and we're going to cover index and match. And then once we go ahead and see the two, compare the two, we're going to go ahead and talk about XLOOKUP at the very end there, and run through a few sample cases of when XLOOKUP is going to be our savior for the day. Now, with that being said, I do like to make my videos hands-on. You might hear me say throughout the day, hey, pause the video. Try it out on the exercise file yourself, as opposed to just watching me do it. It does help you memorize these tactics. It gives you some form of muscle memory. I do want to point out that XLOOKUP is only available for our Office 365 users. So if you pop into your software and you notice that you don't have that function, it's because we have either Excel 2019, 2016, or 2013. Now, even if you have Excel 2019 that does not have XLOOKUP, it's only available for Office 365 users, which is kind of like a monthly subscription we pay with Microsoft. That way they get to update our tools quite regularly for us. I'm pretty excited to get started. Hopefully you are too. With that being said, let's go ahead and see what we can learn about with VLOOKUP and Index and Match and XLOOKUP. Alrighty, welcome everybody. So just to let everyone know that I'm currently inside the Excel XLOOKUP eLearning file. I want to go ahead and point out that I'm currently looking at this spreadsheet here, the XLOOKUP basics, and I'm looking at the 2019 movie list that we have. I have some certain ranking orders, I have some movies, and I have the gross revenue that we have for each one of these movies. Now, typically with older versions of Excel, we had a function that we'd use called VLOOKUP. Some people might have used index and match because they had some one reason or another that made it better for them. Now, with that being said, VLOOKUP is a pretty, pretty useful function. However, a lot of people had difficulties using that VLOOKUP function because of all of the limitations it had. Now, VLOOKUP, it's a great function, don't get me wrong, but it actually has a lot of rules that the user of the function has to pay attention to. So me, as I'm using it, I have to be aware of how my data is set up and how specifically how my table set up and what column I'm referring to. A lot of hard coded values inside that VLOOKUP that we have to be consistent about. Let's go ahead and fill out a VLOOKUP to try to find the sales of Toy Story 4. Now I do have it nicely right over here. So hopefully we have been playing around with VLOOKUP. It's been around for quite some time. I'm going to go over to the cell that says old there right next to it, cell F5. And I'm going to put an equal sign there. Hopefully, if you're following along, you're putting in that equal sign to let Excel know that you want to do a function or a formula of some sort. Now, I'm going to go ahead and type in the name VL. And it looks for the leftmost column of a table and returns a value in the same row. Now, most of us know by now that the table has to be sorted in ascending order based off the lookup value. Now, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and hit tab to type in the rest of the function for me because tab is our autocomplete. Now, with our VLOOKUP, it's been around quite some time, there's four different parameters that we have to worry about. And the very first one is our lookup value. Now, as we know, the lookup value, um, I'm going to use the value Toy Story 4 to go ahead and look up this table of information here and find that movie here. Now, something about the lookup value that it must be 
the leftmost column. Must be the leftmost column of the second parameter of the table array. Now, once you give it a lookup value, I'm going to go ahead and give it that Toy Story 4. In order for a VLOOKUP to actually find the position of this lookup value and return the corresponding column, the lookup value has to be the leftmost column inside the table array. So now that I have a lookup value, and when I hit my comma there, it's going to ask me for a table array. Now a table array, by definition, is at least two or more columns of data. You have two or more columns of data. Now lucky for me, I have three columns. Two, three. But my lookup value starts in the second column here. So when I do do my highlight, I'm going to make sure to only highlight my movie column and my gross revenue column. Therefore, I'm satisfying the requirement of it being the first value in the leftmost column there. Great. I'm going to go ahead and hit comma here. And now for my table array, I'm going to go ahead and highlight those two values, those two columns. I'm going to hit control shift to the right once I have a cell selected. And I'm going to hit control shift down. That way we can go ahead and just quickly grab the two columns that we need. And that satisfies my table array argument or parameter. Now a good little tip Microsoft has is to always absolute reference your table arrays. Simply going inside of it and hitting F4, F4 on your top row. Therefore, in case you ever do copy this cell or drag it somewhere else with the autofill, your table array won't lose any of its values due to relative referencing. I'm going to go ahead and hit a comma. I'm going to hit my delimiter there. And now it's asking for a column index number. Now, VLOOKUP's great, but this column index number flustered people. And I met a lot of people, they get it confused. It's asking for the information that you want returned. So if I'm looking for the sales, I'm looking for the gross sales here, it's going to ask for what column, or more specifically, what position is that column located? Now, you're going to notice that my table array actually has two columns inside the highlight. I have the movie and the gross. Now, for the lookup value, you have to have it inside of column one, the column index number. Now, if you want to return the gross value, you're going to ask for the second column of information. So your column index number will be number two. That leads to a lot of issues because if someone adds in a value or a column to your information, your values will be incorrect. I'll show you that in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and choose the number two for my column index so that once it does find Toy Story, it will return the second column of information, which is the gross. Now here's the interesting thing. The final value, the final parameter, it's actually in brackets. Now I want to go ahead and point out that these brackets that we're seeing means that it's optional. Now if you don't include that optional parameter, it's going to default to an approximate match. Meaning if it does not find Toy Story 4 but finds something close to it, will you accept that? Probably not. I don't want another gross value for a different movie. So I'm going to go ahead and do an exact match there. I'm either going to put the number 0 or the word false by clicking tab. Now this essentially is going to go ahead and ensure that it's looking for exactly my lookup value. And if it can't find that, it's just going to say NA. Now if I don't include this, it's actually going to default to a true, an approximate match. If I don't include this, which is very misleading and a lot of people don't know that about their VLOOKUPs. So it's very important to specify that exact match parameter there. Now, once you do have the VLOOKUP formula in there, I have my lookup value, Toy Story 4. I have where it can find that lookup value inside my table array. And I specified what column I want returned. And the return type, which is exactly. Now, I'm going to go ahead and hold the control key on my keyboard and hit enter. That way, it will punch in the value without going down a value in the cell address. Great. So I just want to go ahead and make sure that if you were following along that we did confirm that Toy Story 4 is the lookup value that we have and that the VLOOKUP gave us the correct value. 
I do want you, if you weren't following along, just to pause this video, write out that VLOOKUP in there, fill it out yourself, get a feel for it. Don't forget to hit F4 once you're done with the table array, F4 to add in the dollar signs. And more importantly, don't forget your match types, because VLOOKUP requires that, otherwise it defaults to an approximate match, which is true for the number one. Welcome back. Hopefully you did pause the video and try punching in that function, that VLOOKUP that we did there. Now that we're back, I do want to explain that the VLOOKUP, although it's simple to fill out, pretty easy to logically process, it does have limitations. Let me explain. Like one limitation that I see over here, I'm going to click in there to show the value is with my column index number there. That is hard coded is what we call it. Meaning if someone actually goes into your spreadsheet and chooses to insert another column, well, that column two is going to be looking at a blank column now. Now go ahead and insert a blank column right before the gross. So go ahead and click on the gross and right click and hit insert and go ahead and notice that your VLOOKUP still says the value for number two for the column index number there. Still says the value two. Now you're going to notice that the value turned to zero. So what ends up happening is people are going to have to be cautious of protecting their worksheets and making sure people can't insert columns there. So that way their formulas will show up with the correct values. So that's just one of the limitations of the VLOOKUP. Now another limitation would of course be my lookup value. If my lookup value wasn't in the first column of this data set, my VLOOKUP wouldn't have worked. The VLOOKUP is what I say, it's in one of those neck braces. It's in a neck brace and it can only look in one direction. It can only look that way. So it's in a little brace and its face, I'm gonna draw a poorly drawn face there, is looking that way. And its neck brace is stuck. It's wearing a big old neck brace there on its neck. So it can't even look the other direction. So let's say instead of the gross value, you wanted to find the rank. This VLOOKUP wouldn't be able to do that for you. So the VLOOKUP is very limiting. And a lot of people don't like the fact that the default value number one is actually approximate match. So if we forget to include that, we're gonna look for something approximately very close to what we're looking for, but not exactly if it's not there, as opposed to saying not in list. So to recap, the VLOOKUP is a great function. It is pretty simple to fill out, only four parameters. But there are limitations with my lookup value, with my column index number, and the match type that we see here. So for years and years and years, people would have this debate. They're gonna say like, all right, we're gonna use another function. We're gonna use another function called index, and we're gonna nest it with another function called match. Now, instead of using VLOOKUP, people started using index and match, and then became the debate of which one's better? Which one should I use and why? And people always had their own reasons why VLOOKUP's better, why index and match is better. Now, they're both great functions, but we just discussed the limitations of a VLOOKUP, and pretty much each parameter has one. Each parameter has a downside to it. Now that we've seen this, I just want to spend a few minutes showing you index and match explaining what indexing really means. And then once we cover VLOOKUP and index and match, we'll go ahead and start talking about our XLOOKUP examples and the various ways it can solve all these problems that VLOOKUP or index and match introduce. Hey everybody, it's Faz here. Now we just learned about the VLOOKUP and all of its limitations. Now that we know about that, let's go ahead and compare it to index and match. The nesting of those two functions will actually do the same results as a VLOOKUP. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my very first function, put an equal sign in there and type in index, which actually returns a reference to a value. I'm gonna go ahead and hit tab there. Now something interesting is, inside of computers, when you're programming, there's something called data structures. Now I'm just trying to do this to help explain what indexing means, just to give you some sense of what that actually is doing. Now in computers, there's a data structure. If you're a programmer, you may have just heard of it in one of your introductory courses called an array. An array, it's a way you store numbers or information. 
and you typically declare them. You know, so you have like an array of three values. You know, I'll have the value 10 and the value 20 and the value 30 inside of this array. Now, when you want to use those values, 10, 20, 30, inside of your application or your program, whether whatever language you're using, typically how you call the values out is by using an index number. So I'm going to go ahead and do array of zero. And I want to go ahead and point out that's actually looking at the value 10. And array of one is actually looking at the value 20. And array of two is actually looking at the value 30. I'm sure some of us have heard say computers have an offset or they start at zero. Well, yeah, they do. The counting structure starts at zero. That way I can declare something and then I can use what they call the index number to go ahead and actually find the value. So bottom line is those three blue arrows, they're pointing to my index numbers. So an index number is just a reference to a value. Array zero is a reference to the number 10. Array one is a reference to the number 20. So what's interesting enough is in layman's terms, how I want you to see the index is all it's doing is going down a certain column, a certain array, and array is a column, and it's going to place a number next to it. It's going to put place a reference. So let's just say you're looking for the gross values, which we are. So if you want to go ahead and index something, you typically index what you're looking for, which is my gross value. So I'd highlight this here. Now that's just the first parameter. And in layman's terms, all it's doing here is it's going down the list and it's assigning a reference number to it. That's all my index is doing, is just assigning a reference number. Now here's the beautiful part. Once you give it a array, it's gonna go ahead and ask for a row number. Now we don't know that. If we knew that, we wouldn't need to go ahead and use this function. We can just look at the gross sales. We knew what row it was on. So what we can do is we can use a function called match for the row number. This is called nesting functions. Now match is pretty simple. It's just asking for two things. It's asking for a lookup value. And it's going to go ahead and ask for where it can find that lookup value. So once we go ahead and go down the list here, essentially assigning a number to each one of the gross values, you're going to go ahead and give a match. Now this match is basically the front part of the VLOOKUP we're gonna go ahead and give it a lookup value. Now this lookup value, again, I'm gonna to use Toy Story 4 to go ahead and look up my gross revenue. Now my lookup array is actually where it can find the lookup value. So you're gonna give it the column of where you can find it. So typically what people do is once they give it the lookup value, they go and highlight where they can locate that lookup value. Now think about it. How this typically works is that the match function here is actually going to look for a value inside of this array. So it actually solves a match first. So it's going to be like, oh, you want number three. You want row three. You want row three because Toy Story 4 is on row three compared to this highlight structure that we have. So now it's going to go ahead and boil down the row number to three. Now keep in mind, index has a list of cell addresses, an array. It's going to give us the third value in that array, which is our gross number. So in the very end, inside of this cell, once index and match have completed themselves, match has given the row number, index has given the reference to the row number, we'll go ahead and see that same value there. I know, it seems like a lot. Index and match is pretty technical compared to VLOOKUP. I mean, the word index is in there. It will help now that we do a little example, though. Just a quick little example of filling out an index function. So I want to go ahead and index what I'm looking for. That's what I typically tell myself in my head. Index what you're looking for. Now I'm going to go ahead and choose to index the gross column there. So C4 to C13. I'm going to look through this list, and essentially it's just going down the list, putting numbers next to each one, putting what they call as a reference. I'm going to hit comma. 
because now it's going to ask for my row number. Now for my row number, I don't know it. So I'm just going to nest the function called match. Once I see the word match, I'm just going to click tab. It auto completes it for me. Now it's asking for my lookup value. And in order to find the gross revenue of Toy Story 4, I have to give it the lookup value of Toy Story 4. Now at this point, your VLOOKUP already has your table array. It has everything it needs to find that Toy Story 4. All you're giving it is a column index number. My index and match doesn't know where Toy Story 4 lives. It doesn't know that it's in this column. You have to specify with the lookup array. So with my lookup array now, I'm just going to go down the movies. So I want you to match F3, Toy Story 4, with this list here, B4 to B13. Now remember, this is going to go ahead and just give you a row number. That row number will be the third row. Now index and match, remember the index, it actually is just sitting here. I'll do it in blue again. And it's just waiting. It's like, all right, I have a list of the numbers here. And now my match is saying, you want row three. So all of that goes away to row three. And this is just going to give you the third value of this column, which will actually be the gross. The three and the three along with each other. Now, something interesting, though, is once you give it a lookup array, there are match types. To where if you put the number one, it's going to find the largest value that is less than or equal to the lookup value. Or if you put a negative one, it does the greater than. Let's all make sure that we have an exact match. We're looking for exactly what we want there with a zero, an exact match. And I'm going to go ahead and close my match parenthesis. But if you end off on a red parenthesis, just know you missed one. And I'm also going to close my index parenthesis as well. Now from here, I'm going to get control enter, control enter. And it should go ahead and give you the same value. I'll just go ahead and go to my home tab and add a dollar sign there as our VLOOKUP. Now these two functions are different. I mean, one's using an index and a match nested together. So my index is going down this column. My match is going to go ahead and use a lookup value. And it's going to go ahead and find that lookup value inside that movie list. Go ahead and pause the video, write out the index and match, use my layman's terms, index what you're looking for, and then do the reverse VLOOKUP portion by giving it a lookup value and where it can find the lookup value. Go ahead and pause the video and try that out. Come right back. Alrighty, welcome back. Hopefully you had a little fun playing around with the index and match and the VLOOKUP there that we just did. Now that we've done the index and match and VLOOKUP, let's start talking about the all new XLOOKUP that's available for our Office 365 users. I'm gonna go over here to the sales option and put in an equal sign and type in XLOOKUP, all new lookup function for our Office 365 users only. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit tab here, XL tab, and then I have my lookup value. Very similar to VLOOKUP, right? Now, in fact, there's actually six parameters. And a lot of people get overwhelmed, but don't worry, the last three are optional. And they do make it pretty convenient to have that flexibility. We'll talk about them in our next examples coming up too. But let's start with the basics. Now for the lookup value here, let's go ahead and do Toy Story 4 just as we would. I'm gonna hit comma, and now it's gonna ask for a lookup array. Now the lookup array is where it can go ahead and look up this value here. So if I'm looking for Toy Story 4, I can give it a lookup array of the movie list. Now here's the thing that they did. They separated the lookup array and the return array to two separate parameters. It actually reminds me a lot of the really old school function called lookup. Not sure if anyone's an old school Excel user, but back in the day when you used to use the lookup function, they had the lookup vector and the result vector separated. That way we can go ahead and have a lot of flexibility. So it's just kind of figuring out that they did it right the first time and they switched it back to that way. And I love that. So now that we have a return array, 
So I have my lookup value F3 and I have a lookup value. It's asking what do you want returned once I find a corresponding value that matches this. Now I want to return the actual gross. Now if you want, you can actually stop right here. You can hit parentheses, close it, enter, and you're done. You've found the X lookup. You have a lookup value. Look through here, return the value that corresponds here. I want to point out that the X lookup will default to an exact match every single time. An exact match. Now I can also add an error checking to where if it doesn't have the value, I can hit comma and then if not found, I can just go ahead and say no match. Just to let people know that there's no match as opposed to the NA value. Now that is an optional parameter, the if not found. And the next optional parameter is our match mode. Now we have different ways we can match, and by default, it's an exact match, which is the opposite of our VLOOKUP. Now keep in mind with these here, we can even do wild character matches using a comma, a star, or a tilde to search for a number of characters. But for us, we're going to do the default here, an exact match there. So we don't even need to include that. Now something very interesting is if you have a larger data set, you can choose how it searches through that data set. You can have it search from the first all the way to the last or the last all the way to the first. Now there is something called a binary search that you can set up. I'm not gonna draw out what a binary search is, but it is a way you search through data in a computer, a binary tree. And a binary search must be sorted in a descending order depending on how you want to retrieve your information. Now again, these two options are optional. You don't need them in there. But it's nice to know that we don't have to nest our if error anymore because it's built into the function. Let's go ahead and make sure that we have the X lookup. Just pause the video and type in our X lookup function. Confirm that it is correct and hit Control Enter. Great, the same values here. Now let's just go ahead and change this Toy Story to Toy Story 3. Now you're going to go ahead and notice that my X lookup is saying no match versus my index and match and V lookup are saying NA. Or I don't need to nest my if error anymore. Go ahead and pause the video and just try out the X lookup. Try adding in your own error checking if not found. And that's pretty cool. It does streamline quite a bit of your function writing. Now my X lookup can go ahead and solve all the limitations of my V lookup. My X lookup can go ahead and solve all the limitations of my index and match because it's so difficult to fill out, so technical. Now, with this, I do want to point out, if you insert an additional column there, you insert an additional column, like I just did there too, my V lookup wouldn't have worked. Now, you're going to notice that with our X lookups, you don't have to worry about that problem when we insert additional columns. That's because we're not specifying it's a direct column number, a column index number. It's not hard coded in there. So go ahead and pause the video and just try playing around with the X lookup. Try changing the values a little bit and definitely add in an if not found value. For those people that don't know too much about error codes, we're giving them human readable error codes. Welcome back, everybody. It's Faz here. And now I just want to point out that we're on the XLOOKUP approximate sheet inside the Excel XLOOKUP e-learning file there. Now with that being said, XLOOKUP can do an approximate match. It's just not the default setting that we were talking about there, as opposed to my VLOOKUP, which it is. Now you're going to notice over here, our VLOOKUP can go ahead and find our discount rates pretty smoothly with the quantity of 28 there, even though it's not inside the list. 25 is, but it still gave us the 13 there. We use the 28, and it's using an approximate match. My range lookup has defaulted to approximate match. Now, with the VLOOKUP function, that's great. It defaults to it, but I just want to make sure that when we use XLOOKUP, we know that we have to set that parameter. I'm going to go ahead and do an equal sign. And I'm going to type in XL tab. I'm going to use the same lookup value as my VLOOKUP, the 28 there. And now I'm going to give my lookup and my return arrays by two corresponding parameters. 
Now for my lookup array, I actually want you to find this quantity inside of the quantity list here. And I want you to return the discount that's associated with it. Now if you don't find it, I just want to say no discount. And I want to go ahead and point out that I want to find it and match it to the next smaller item there. So, oh, it has 28, but there's no 28. All right, I'm going to match that to 25 there. I'm going to hit tab. Which is going to add in the negative one. And again, I don't have to add in the search mode. I can go ahead and close it from there. So it's very important to add in that extra parameter there so that we can go ahead and get, I'll add in the percentage, the 13% there. So the approximate match has to be included there. And we also have our VLOOKUP, which defaults to approximate, which does not need that there. So it's a little shorter here on the VLOOKUP end. Go ahead and pause the video and just give that a try. Try filling out an X lookup function there and putting in your error checking, your if not found. Now we introduce the match types. Hey everybody, it's Faz here. Welcome back. Now something really cool I've learned with XLOOKUP is that I can actually return more than one value in a function. Like, you know, with VLOOKUP, if you want to find someone's first name or last name or department, you have to do that one by one. Well, the XLOOKUP can actually go ahead and spill your values into the corresponding cells that we have there. Let me show you what I mean. Let's do it together. I'm going to go ahead and put an equal sign in there and type in XL tab. XL tab, that's our friend. We like shortcuts. And let's go ahead and use the lookup value, the ID here, to go ahead and find our first, last, and department for ID 234. I got quite the team there, right? In my departments. I'm going to go ahead and hit comma there. And then for my lookup array here, my lookup array, I want to go ahead and find this lookup value inside of this ID list. Now, for the return array, it's one or more columns of data. So if I want, I can go ahead and highlight all three first name, last name, and department to go ahead and return those. I'm going to go ahead and put my if not found. I'm just going to put no match. And again, I want it to be an exact match. I'm going to close it from there. Now, when you go ahead and hit control enter, it's going to go ahead and show you that the formula has spilled over into the neighboring blank cells. I'm going to go ahead and hit got it. And just like that, I was able to go ahead and find Michael Scott's department. And if you ever do need to change the ID number, like let's say to 249, it'll go ahead and find someone else's. Now, if the ID number doesn't exist, lucky for us, we can go ahead and see the no match value. Now, wouldn't it be cool if you can have the no match bleed over into the next cells? I don't believe that's possible yet. Go ahead and try this out. Try out filling out this function here, the X lookup, and having it spill over. And just knowing that that property exists will save you some time. Welcome back. Hopefully you're finding some ideas of what you can use X lookup for. But let's go ahead and talk about another scenario that X lookup can come and save the day. I'm over here on the X lookup two-way sheet, and X lookup can go ahead and look up information both horizontally and vertically. So for example, if I'm looking for a certain material inside of a certain group, like my wood, inside of group B here, I can go ahead and see that value, 76.23. Now, if you want to go ahead and use XLOOKUP to return that value, it can do a two-way search. I'm going to go ahead and do an equal XL and tab. Now for our very first lookup value, let's actually find the group, the lookup value group there. And in order to find these correct groups, it's going to find a lookup array. Now, every other lookup array that we've been using, I want to mention, has been going vertically. Our lookup arrays can also be horizontal. There we go. I have B4 to E4. Now, for my return array, I don't want to return anything just yet. I mean, we got the columns, we got the groups. But I want to go ahead and return the actual value inside that group. So I'm going to do another XL tab. A return array is another XL. It's going to return something for me. 
Now for this lookup value here, for my lookup value, I'm going to look for the wood type. And it can actually find the wood type inside of the type list. Easy peasy. Now once it actually finds that, I actually want it to return the corresponding information in the data. I return array there. Now, with that being said, when I go ahead and close out this parenthesis, and I close out this one here, because I'm ending off on a red, it'll go ahead and return me group B in the wood value, and the result will be 76.23. Typically, they solve from the inner portion going to the outer, so it's going to solve my very first X lookup there with H5, going over to the wood over there, the wood option. And once it has that, it boils down this X lookup. It's going to return the wood option there. Now, once it does that, it's going to go ahead and find the other X lookup, which is going to go over to H6, our group types. And it's going to give us the corresponding group that matches wood there, which is 76.23. I'm going to hit Control and Enter, 76.23 there. So go ahead and try this out. Pause the video. I do understand this is one of the weirder ones because we're nesting two X lookups together. But to further enhance and help you understand what's going on behind the scenes, I'm going to go ahead and point out that most Excel formulas have an ability to evaluate themselves. You can use a function, the functionality of Excel. I'm going to go to the Formulas tab and give that a click. And there's an option called Evaluate Formula inside the Formula Auditing Command Group. Now I evaluate this formula here. Let's go ahead and see this. It's going to solve for H6 and evaluate in there. It's going to find group B, and it's going to go ahead and evaluate our first X lookup there. So X lookup, searching for wood there. It's going to look up inside of here, and it's going to return our corresponding value. Cool. Now that it solved that very next one, it's going to go ahead and solve the rest of the X lookup, our very first one. So we have a lookup value of B. And we have a lookup array and a return array now, which go ahead and give us our value there. The evaluate formula does become helpful when you're nesting formulas together. So go ahead and take advantage of that inside the formulas tab if you just want to get a sense of how Excel solves its questions and formulas behind the scenes. Go ahead and give that a try, pause this video, and try out using the all new X lookup by nesting two of them together. Alrighty, everybody, it's Faz again, F-A-Z, and I just want to congratulate you all. Thank you all for taking this quick little video and watching it, refreshing yourself up on VLOOKUP and INDEX and MATCH, and upgrading your skills and learning about that XLOOKUP function and various ways it can help you solve some spreadsheet problems. Now, with that being said, it's very important to notice that we do have some other videos you can take a look at. I highly encourage you to sign up for either Excel Day 1, the beginner, the intermediate, or the expert course that we have available. Now, with that being said, if you have any questions or any curiosities to see what other class listings we offer, be sure to check out our website. Now, you can go ahead and head over to www.learnit.com and take a look at our class offering for our flexible training solutions that we can offer for you and your organizations. Thank you all for taking this course here. I hope this information suits you well. and. Stay tuned for some more videos. Thanks for watching. Don't forget we also offer live classes in office applications, professional development, and private training. Visit learnit.com for more details. Please remember to like and subscribe and let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for choosing Learnit.